Why Write to Them, September 18, 2020 by Anna Von writes. The short answer is, to deny them any plausible deniability. So long as they don't know that a problem exists officially, they can avoid it. They can shrug and say, I dunno nothing about that, ma'am. It's only when you nail them down and can show proof that you told them something, and if necessary, subpoena the records and show the records, your correspondence, etc., that is crafted into admissible evidence, that they become accountable. So, if you are not Catholic, why would you address the Pope? Because you now know just how responsible the Pope really is for all this rot. You have an obligation to him and to yourself and everyone else to make him fully aware of the problems that the misadministration of the Roman pontificate has caused. So, if you know that you don't have a congressional delegation in either of the two congresses sitting in D.C., why write to them? To make sure that they know every nasty detail of how their acts and omissions have resulted in criminality infesting this entire country, including foreign policy. And make them accountable. It's their job. It's their errors, omissions, and crimes in office. And again, you have a responsibility, having become aware of crimes, to report those crimes as widely as possible to all persons associated with the government at all levels. You have to report it, or you become an accomplice to it. Reporting crime is your public duty. Some crimes, like treason, have to be reported to the president, the members of the state Supreme Court, and or the governor, and if you know of anything smacking of treason and fail to report guess what? It's your fanny liable for the crime, as much as those guilty of committing it. So this, in very general terms, is why you need to write to them, even if they and their offices are part of the problem you are reporting. Here's my little story of the day and one more pungent bit of evidence that yes, indeed, I am telling you the truth about all this crapola. I emailed the Alaska congressional delegation today and reported the gross violation of the Palermo protocols that their territorial and municipal governments agreed to. Funny thing, they screen emails to limit them in such a way that you can only send them an email if you admit to an office of personhood and accept a title. Just go look at Senator Lisa Mikowski's list of persons who can send her an email. Only persons adopting foreign titles, titles of uniformed officers, titles of clergy, etc., can address Ms. Murkowski. The only quasi titled person available in the entire list is professor, as anyone can be a professor of one thing or another. Average red blooded Alaskans can't reach Her Highness via email. It's the same for Congressman Don Young. In both cases, the title, or prefix, is obligatory, required. Now, ask yourselves why assuming a title or prefix and adding it to your name would be necessary if these yahoos were serious about serving the people of this country. When does Joe Blow, garage mechanic, need a pay grade and title and or office to speak to a member of Congress? This automatically assures them that the only people who contact them are subject to their government, or are, voluntarily, subjecting themselves to their government, which means to their personal power, too, regarding all municipal government matters. Don't forget that the municipal government is a plenary, meaning absolute, oligarchy. It's run by members of Congress with no restraint upon their powers, except the actual physical limitations of location of the municipal government. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Anytime you accept a title, Mr., or, Mrs., or, Miss., or, Esquire, or, Captain, Retired, or, Doctor, or so on, you give them an excuse to begin making presumptions about you, which you may have to rebut. Titles of all kinds are foreign to our actual government, but are widely used by the British territorial and municipal subcontractors. So, ask yourselves, if I am, full of it, why is it that Joe Blow, garage mechanic, can't send an email to either Senator Lisa Murkowski or to Congressman Don Young without adopting some kind of recognized title? Answer, because these people aren't serving Alaskans. They are serving themselves and others like them, territorial U.S. citizens and municipal citizens of the United States, who readily adopt and use honorific titles, titles of office, titles of rank, and titles of nobility, which are endemic to their foreign governments. They still need to be told that what they are doing is wrong, that their actions and inaction in office are resulting in harm to the people they are supposed to serve in, good faith, and that their errors, omissions, and crimes are being noticed and held against them. They need to know that the sheeple are not, after all, sheep.
Links to Anna's articles and resources can be found in the video description box. Thank you for subscribing, liking and sharing. If you enjoy having Anna's latest articles made into videos, please consider making a purchase from Ed's website sacredintuitiveelements.com. Thank you.